and that's a big shame. Okay, that's jammed. All right, today's a big day. So, let's so let's take these two home and start to play with them because they're small and uh, I can do my horology work on them. Wish me good luck. Okay, that didn't start too well. I didn't even see that coming. I just thought they were coming loose and they fell off. So that's a whole headache. But you know what? This is why you do these things. The stem of the bolt wasn't threaded into this casing. So I was right. So this one I've just taken out earlier. So um, this one's not gonna come out that easily. But the less I break, the less I have to repair. And it felt like it's come loose. Yes. Uh oh. Wow. That's seen some days and unthreaded but because there's a crack in it pretty much all the way uh, it's probably easier just to pull this off this way there we go are you ready? That's not bad. Now one thing you don't do is rub any of this. You rub it, you scratch it. This has to be slowly dismantled. So what I'll do in this case is replace as what I need to, but keep these faces and dials because they belong to this bike. And this is the exact era. So why would I replace it with a, another one? Let's get some penetrant in there. Wow, 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 wow. Phew. Very careful, don't pull. Don't pull on the dial. The dial is a no-go area. See the magnet that's in there. Get ready to catch. The last thing we want to do is damage this. Hands behind the dial and voila. You can see how that the glass has damaged this dial. So we gotta straighten that. All right, talking about a learning curve, um, I cleaned the mechanics up all the time, all the way, and um, and then I had a speedometer cable which I inserted and uh, realized that this was jammed; it wouldn't wouldn't turn. So what I did was I 
uh, took a flame torch and very gently applied some heat <clears throat> to this area. Not a lot, but just enough to move whatever was in there. And I heard this hissing sound and this thing was just disintegrating in front of my eyes. This is a highly flammable petroleum-based polymer, which uh, is a very, very, very low heat uh, tolerance, and of course, just was eating itself. I had to spray it with a degreaser just to just to put out the f the, the the melt. But yeah, what that's done is it's just ruined this entire thing. So I have found another one online which I bought, which is probably worse off. But I will be able to get this, hopefully, if it's the right model i'll be able to um, open up these contact points here somehow and uh, replace these elements so i made a little tool it's a kind of a screwdriver pointed in and basically what you have to do to take these out is i don't know if you can see but the um there are there's basically there's a slot in which this shaft sits in and what they do is they they punch the top and close the top of the shaft off so that you can't get out and change the mileage but if you get this punch in here and you tap it along the edge just very gently because it's very soft material you can open that slot back up again so i've just done that side and you'll see this will just pop right out and there you are so when you change this out you're doing any repair work you uh you just slot that back in again and i'm assuming with the with a punch just hit it on the edge then it'll f swell the, the the material up and, and lock that in position so a great new discovery for me and uh now that means i can get on and repair this and swap this out with the replacement part that, that is coming hopefully that will be okay otherwise i'm going to be in the dwang There we go, and there we are. So now we have to find out why this thing is frozen. Unfortunately, in trying to manipulate this, um, the magnet is broken. So I'll have to use the other one. The magnet is super, super fragile. So it was like glass. Um, but so yeah, I've managed to get this one to move, but obviously this one I can't unless I find a way to uh, Remove this brass pin and then replace the magnet. Uh, I'm stuck with this one as a broken piece, but Yeah, at least I know how this works Now this has been exposed to the weather For some time What we don't want to scratch the surface so I'm just giving a gentle wipe get some of the larger bits of ingress off and then I'm just going to use some gentle kitchen cleaning detergent before I do anything
I've gone from a solvent base to just just water because um, I'm worried that the, the strength of the solvent could do damage to the base. I'm just going to dilute it off. You can see how the green is coming out nicely. And I'm going to continue with water. So it's about as clean as you're going to get this. So now I'm going to start to dismantle this thing in the next few days and uh, get through what is quite a mess. I start soaking this now with some oil and see how much of this I can release and free. But the most valuable bit is this dial, which um, I think uh, looks okay. I'm pleased with that. I just get some fluid in over the next few days. Once the dial cover is off, I can start to wiggle it very gently. Right, here's the replacement. It's pretty knackered. So I'm going to open this and see what we got inside. Doesn't look too bad actually. It's not variations, but looks to be similar enough. Oh, that's a shame. We'll have to soak it, see if we can get any life out of it. Right, this is the last ditch attempt at trying to get these spindles to move. So I've been submerging them in. Uh, a GT85 which is a deep penetrant oil for about two weeks now I'm not getting any movement out of them so I've decided I'm going to settle the bases down in uh, petrol uh, petrol is much thinner than oil obviously and I'm hoping that a few days of soaking will uh, start to loosen up those all the debris that's inside these two um, I have a concern however that any of the plastics that I've got in there will react or might not react with the with the petrol I don't know we're just going to have to hope and see this is kind of why I've left the tops open because I don't want uh, I don't want to seal it and cause uh, vapors to damage what paintwork I've got left on this finished surface so considering I'm going to still uh, restore this dial I don't want to have to do any more work particularly because the numbers are all perfect so let's see if we can get away with that luckily the uh, the um, rev counter doesn't have any numbers like this does so I'm really really fingers crossed that I don't have any more drama and I can still use those but I really don't have much choice because it's really not worth anything if I can't get them to work. Okay, I made a, a more rigid uh, piece. Let's see if I can get any movement out of this. It's moving very, very slowly. There we go. Wow, it's coming. It's coming. We got it. We got it. Saved. This is a time when you can do damage, so you really want to be gentle. No forcing. Just get that lubricant in there where it was sealed away, sealed out, and we get some movement down there. There we go.
That's so smooth now. This is a slightly different system. This is a retainer plate for the for the mileage gauge. So um, this should just pop out as it has done here, just like that. To now try and turn this, uh, that magnet's got a crack in it. Hmm. That magnet looks broken already. Oh well, twenty quid what it cost me and I can probably still get some spares off this if I need all right let's keep working at it Yes. So we just replace this face because this one's wrong. The old 68 doesn't have this red bit there. Please don't be broken. That has actually just popped out of the out of this side. So I need another retaining pin, but I have a spare one. So we might be able to get this this gamble working. How smooth we can get it. This thing up already, just like that. It's always best to do it by hand because there's no sharp corners in your hands and you're able to straighten these without getting too many kinks back in again. It's a bit of a kink here. Let's just work that out. I'm used to doing this on fine wristwatches so this is quite comical actually. So if this is able to do it this way. There you are. So soft. Thank 
gently, gently. <coughs> That's now straight. One little trick is with these mount rubbers, get a very thin layer of GT85 or um, the other one. That really wets up, it starts to uh, impregnate into the rubber and softens it, swells it a little bit more. So when you're putting it back in to the casing, um, it should sit nice and tight as if it was, well, nearly new. So, well, because this one was encased um, with a glass, it's in a lot cleaner condition. So, I'm hoping the spring on this one is fine. Yes. So, really, what I want to be doing is copying this spring. See the way the, um, the magnet, what should happen is this, as you're increasing uh, the speed, you'll see the central pivot will start to slip, like a clutch basically. There you go, slipping. So we want to smooth that out, that must be really much smoother than it is now. These are the leftovers which we've got to go through to choose the best. The one thing we don't have is we might have a speedometer. Well, that one looks all right. So I'm going to put all these together, all the good bits together, and then we'll make one component out of all of this. Hey, hey, we have the spring. So now I've got to use a collet, a remover, pop that off, pop that off, put that on, and or maybe this mount just comes off and that goes in. That might be what it is. All right, we'll have a try. So obviously now we're going to have to count um, because I'm assuming this was calibrated. So we need to count this calibration until it comes out. So we'll try that now. So that's half, one, one and a half, two, six and a half. Right, six and a half. Three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half. All right, let's see if this twizzles. Isn't that wonderful? Here we go. We have just repaired a Smith style. I think although this has got a little dent in it, this original one is in a better state than that one. In restoration, the, the base lettering is really going to be tricky to replace. So I've decided I'm going to use that one. see on this one it's uh, there's a sticky there you go so basically this mechanism here is sticking so what I need to do is pull this all out and then clean this 
so that it is smooth. Four, four and a half, five, five and a half. So five and a half. So I don't have my watch making tools here. Tiniest little bit of ingress in there. Half, one, one and a half. That seems to be better. Mechanically, it's all good and repaired, but for now, that's original and all working, so really happy with that.